take you live back to Lambasi. And that's, of course, where others are being laid to rest today. My colleague Fundiswa Mshegude has been there. We also saw the Premier of the province, Oscar Mabuyane, who arrived to cry, I guess, with the families of those who lost their loved ones. Fundiswa, I understand you're standing by with Premier Oscar Mabuyane. Indeed, Criselda, we are standing with the Premier of the East, Mabuyane. We have just witnessed the burial of four family members of the Singina household. Uh, they were part of the 18 people who were killed last week at uh, Ngobozana village. We saw very harrowing scenes, very agonizing, devastating scenes of uh, the burial of four family members, four family members in one day. But the Premier is here. Premier, you have just witnessed the burial of four family members. What came through your mind? Very sad. Uh, I must say, uh, probably allow me to firstly convey our message of condolences. Uh, to all these families that have lost their loved ones, the 18th families. As you would know that the other one has been buried yesterday, uh, King family. I, I still uh, reach out to the King's family. I had a discussion with King's family when we met them. But also I want to reach out to the families in Gumbu of those CPF members that lost uh, their loved ones as well. But also this morning we woke up again on other sad news of a car accident that took place between Dujwa and Mtata, where we also lost about seven lives and nine currently in hospital. So we are really, really conveying our heartfelt, deepest condolences to all these families. We have never experienced what we are experiencing in the province, losing such a number of lives almost at the same time. Here we are now, as you say, uh, very terrible. Uh, actually. Uh, something that is really uh, we're not really uh, used to uh, to see about four coffins at the same time as, as, we, as we stand here the Matu family across the Lusigisiki town is also having four bodies uh, that are also being buried as we speak it's a terrible, it's a terrible thing that we wish it will never happen again where we lose uh, this kind of lives in this kind of manner I'm quite happy that um, the police have managed uh, to uh, find a suspect and I'm happy now that the suspect is also uh, directly linked uh, to this situation and I know police are also looking for three uh, that uh, uh, now they've got a proper lead to. So we're quite happy as Minister said we know whom we are looking for and definitely we need to close this chapter. It can't continue in the manner in which it is sad, sad, sad. Uh, indeed you see this uh, sombre moment here. Uh, but we're here to strengthen the families, we're here to strengthen the community. It's no longer about these families, it's about uh, these families. I, I had uh, an opportunity to speak to Lulo, a young girl who lost uh, his father. Uh, the third uh, uh, coffin here is, is his father. Uh, she's here uh, to actually also see what she would probably never thought uh, about. These are really, really um, a terrible situation that we don't wish to see again happening in our province. You just spoke about the police and strengthening their work. Um, people here have been complaining about irresponsible police that is very low and uh, is very slow rather and that they take time and uh, they think that the criminals are now targeting rural areas because they believe that they are soft targets to them. What can you say in terms of the police now taking swift action to attend to crime scenes? Police are, are, are trying their level best. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't be unfair on them and I've been working with them. But uh, the setup in rural areas makes it very difficult for every kind of government service uh, to be uh, offered to our people. Uh, we've got one police station here that is in town that must be able to service uh, these rural communities. It's not easy uh, to move from town to here, uh, the challenges that you see. So, but police are doing their level best. But now uh, it's 
a wake up call. Now we realize that we've got to change laws, we've got to change uh, regulations and how we've been working. It's a similar situation when you go to health where you say uh, people must be in a radius of 20 kilometers, people must be in a radius of 10 kilometers, etc., in terms of uh, demarcation. It's no longer that situation. We have said so. Uh, thugs, criminals have found Eastern Cape as a refugee camp. They can easily come here and hide. You know, most of them are coming from this province. They go away. Here we talk about someone who is alleged uh, to have done this thing, who once killed the police, who was arrested, who was sentenced uh, for life, and they spent more than 20 years in jail. The person just finishes one year in his, in his parole is alleged to have committed a similar situation again. So it's a serious situation that we must uh, look deeper, not only here, but of course we must make this reflection uh, having seen what we've seen, but it tells you how uh, correctional uh, our correctional centers are. If you can have someone in 20 years in correctional services, but that person comes back uh, uncorrigible. So these are things that we've got to look deeper as government and begin to say, are we really, really uh, getting uh, to the bottom of crisis that we have, the societal ills, you can see this uh, uh, kind of a moral decay that is happening in our communities, etc. So we've got to work together as communities, households, traditional leaders, civil society, government, to make sure that we put a stop on this. Things like this must not happen. In rural areas, we've, we're not used to things like this. So they, uh, it used to be a taboo even to rape a woman. It used to be a taboo. If you have done that thing, you'll be uh, isolated in a community. But now these things are common. We know drugs are being planted uh, all over in our rural communities. So these are not happening out of human, no ordinary human beings. This has got something. It's a really phenomenal phenomenon that we've got to look at it broadly and begin to find proper solutions and answers to the ongoing problem. Because indeed, our people are no longer safe. Our people are not enjoying their lives as they used to enjoy their lives in rural areas. And the more we bring development, you understand here, yeah, this is a kind of a nodal point. We talk about eight billion that is control our and in but also the road that links up to East London. It's happening here. We are really turning the green field here into a brown field. So these kind of developments attract a lot of things that are coming all over. So these are really issues that we've got to look to deal with. We would have wanted to see our people happy to see a lot of this kind of windfall of development happening while they're still alive. If they, if we lose them, it's unfortunate. Premier, you mentioned the uh, Umbu uh, massacre because six people died there and the issue of stock theft comes more often when these things happen what can you say about the issue of stock theft that seems to be getting out of hand in the eastern cape it has really been happening i'm not sure getting out of hand uh, it's, it's a correct statement probably it, it, we have really been not uh, doing much uh, but we've been doing the best again the issue of resourcing the kind of facilities that we have to deal with the issues of stock theft i can tell you provincial commissioner knows there is no single week that I would not be talking to her about the issues of stock theft and how I would want police reinforcement more uh, training around stock theft getting more people but I'm seeing a lot a few days ago I saw some lot of raid that was happening where these actually um, animals were also uh, found and collected uh, by their own uh, people stock theft has been a problem uh, Umbu, Mount Frey and uh, as well as so that belt but it's not only there if you go to BG the problems that we had in BG for long were also revolving around stock theft almost in all rural areas uh, wherever you are there will be even if it is at a minimal scale stock theft is a problem and this is the economy of our own ordinary people where they reside they don't have any anything else they are using this kind of um, uh, the livestock to look after their lives so we do condemn uh, these kind of things but I'm happy that police are responding and now we have got more resources, more deployment that we have been crying for as the provincial government of Eastern Cape. Now National has actually put us under microscopic view and I'm quite happy with that. We are welcoming it and we're going to definitely deal with these kind of problems as we move forward.
Thank you very much. The Premier of the Eastern Cape, Mr. Oscar Mabuyane, echoing what Mr. David King said yesterday during the funeral service of uh, Ruth King. Uh, he was saying that he is disappointed that uh, this crime, this horrific crime, harrowing crime, was allegedly committed by someone who was who is a convicted criminal who was that then released on parole, Criselda. All right, Fundiswa uh, Mshagude, thank you very much uh, indeed speaking to the Premier of uh, the Eastern Cape Province, Oscar Mabuyane, speaking on a number of issues, including that horrific accident that uh, uh, had taken place on the N2 at near Mtata as well. Um, several lives have been lost there. A little, a little bit earlier on this morning, we did speak to the transport authorities there.